Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have another ranking video. So I was not intending on this becoming a series here on my channel, but that's kind of what it has evolved into. So a couple weeks ago, I shared a video ranking every single eyeshadow palette that I own from best to worst. And I had so many requests to do some follow-up videos. So I've also done a highlighter ranking video. And today we're going to be doing blush. That is the next category that seems to have the most votes to it. So this is part three in the series. I'm not 100% sure how far I will continue this series and how many more categories I'll do. But just like last time, definitely leave your feedback down below for other categories that you'd be interested in me ranking. Now, my blush collection is not quite as extensive as the other two categories that I have already filmed. So we're going to be ranking 12 products today. I have 11 blushes and then one blush palette. And remember, I'm only including palettes if they exclusively fall within the category that I'm ranking. Now, if you didn't see videos one and two, I wanna remind you that I love all of these products. I only keep products that bring me joy. So even the products ranked lower in this video are still products that I recommend and that I love. So let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, so I'm gonna kick this off with blush number 12, and this is the shade Snapdragon from Becca. Now, this is actually what I'm wearing today, but I'll be honest, I had to put this at 12 because I don't reach for it that often. When I do use it, I enjoy it, but I feel like it really requires a specific look for me to pair with this. I don't think it's the best pairing for my complexion and my skin tone and most of the makeup looks that I'm creating, but I do think if you enjoy blushes in this color family, you will like this formula. It's very, very pigmented and has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Also, I did want to say that, of course, in this video, I'm just ranking blushes that I own. So these are blushes that work for me, but they're not necessarily going to work for everyone based on your skin tone. But for that reason, I will be making a point to mention the formula of these and not just the color. So if the color doesn't work for you, maybe the formula will and the brand will have something else that fits your complexion a little bit better. The 11th spot is going to be my blush palette. So this is the Sigma Beauty Cheek Palette. Now, if you keep up with my declutter series, you might have seen me talk about this in a chopping block video. And this was actually, I believe, the only product that I put on my chopping block that I kept. I'm pretty sure I ended up decluttering everything else. But I decided to keep this because it does have such a nice variety of blushes to it. Now, some of these are a little bit too dark for me, but I can make them work if I go in with a very light hand, really buff them in, or if I mix them in with something else. Now, I am gonna be honest, I'm mostly keeping this for this pink shade right here because I don't have a lot of very bright pinks like that, and I've kind of been on a baby pink blush kick recently like that's a color that I'm really enjoying wearing especially now during the spring so now my only complaint with these is more so a personal thing I find the pigmentation to be very intense so for me being a little bit lighter it is trickier for me to work with I definitely have to utilize a different technique but that's a good thing for those of you who have a medium or deep skin tone because a lot of these colors will still work for you because they're so intense on the cheek Blush number 10 is a mini. Now this is the Hourglass Mini in the shade Mood Exposure. Oh, I forgot to swatch these. I'll swatch, this one is my favorite one out of it. This is Pinkin, Cordirosa, Pet Name, which is so light. It's almost like a setting powder for me. Tiger Lily, which I just swatched on top of Pet Name. Whoops. Mod Mauve, and then the darkest color is Spiced. Okay, back to mood exposure. You're going to notice kind of a pattern in this video that these more rosy tone colors just aren't my preference necessarily. Now this one is definitely a little bit more muted, a little bit more mauve which is why I do really enjoy it. And formula-wise, this is so smooth and buttery. Even dipping into it just now, it just glides across the skin. So it gives a very, very radiant finish to the cheeks. So if that's what you're after, I would recommend these. And most of the shades are available in a mini, and this is only a, right around $20. So that's a nice option if you didn't want to invest in the full size. But I just can't rank this any higher because my preference is a different tone of blush, but from a formula standpoint, it's very high quality. Okay, speaking of my favorite tone is a different tone, 
Let's get into that now, and I love peaches. Now, over the last few months, or even the last year, I've started to stray away from the orangey pink blush obsession that I have, but I will always have a place in my heart for orangey blushes. I just find them to be so flattering. They work for so many skin tones, and this is one of my favorites. So this is from Glossier. It's one of their cloud paints, and this is in the shade Beam. So there is the color swatch of it. It's definitely pretty intense swatched right there on my hand or my arm, but this is a formula that you can really sheer out or you can build up for some very, very bold cheeks. And because it is a liquid product, it's just very, very natural on the skin. Blush number eight is one of the newest to join my collection. This is from Burt's Bees and it is the shade Toasted Cinnamon. So I do wanna say that if you are my skin tone or lighter, I think this shade is going to be more of a bronzer for you, honestly. But if you like a very warm bronzer, I think you would enjoy this product because from a formula standpoint, it's very high quality. They're very pigmented, so it's definitely something you might want to consider using a light hand with if you do have a lighter skin tone. But because they are so pigmented, they're going to work for a variety of people because they're going to show up pretty bold on the cheeks. And the seventh blush is a cream blush from Pixi. So this is the shade Baby Petal. It's one of their multi balms. This is such a great formula if you want a cream, but you want one that's just very low maintenance because you can draw this directly onto the cheek. You can put it on your finger and tap it in. But my favorite use for this is just to draw it directly onto my cream products blush and then tap it into the skin. It, can you see I have goosebumps? It's snowing right now, by the way. It is April and it's snowing. But that is the color of it. It's just very easy to use. You can really, really buff it into the skin where it's very sheer and natural, or again, you can build it up. And it's just a very natural, I keep saying natural, but it is just a truly natural finish on the skin because it is a cream product. It kind of mimics your own skin's texture. All right, so those were my bottom six. You can kind of see swatched out on my arm here. And I've been reserving this arm for my top six, so let's hop into those. So starting with six, I have a drugstore blush. This is from Catrice. It's one of their strobing blushes. And this is the shade Miss Rosalie Berry. Now, this is kind of a cool product because it does have the different sections in it. So depending on where you put your brush, you're going to get a little bit of a little bit of a different color, but I typically kind of just swirl my brush around. Now this is a little bit of a shiny blush, so if you prefer a matte look, you won't necessarily like this. They do call it a strobing blush because it is supposed to be very dewy on the cheeks, but I would describe it more as dewy than sparkly. I don't think it leaves glitter flecks on the cheeks the same way some other blushes do, so for that reason, I really like it. And the color of it is not typically my favorite, but for some reason, with that really dewy sheen that it has, it's just really stunning on the cheeks. Blush number five recently joined my collection. This is from Flower Beauty. It is their blush balm in the shade Bubbly. So I, okay, I will say I love cream products, but my love for cream products is like number one, I love cream bronzers. Cream blushes, I do enjoy them and when I wear them, I'm always so pleased with the finish that they have and the way that they look on the cheeks but I tend to just prefer to reach for a powder blush for the cheeks. So that's why you saw my cream and liquid blushes ranked a little bit lower on the scale. But again, if you like cream and liquids, these are formulas I would recommend. And this formula in particular, I think is very beginner friendly because it just melts into the skin. And I find that you aren't, you're not going to have any troubles blending this the same way you might with other cream or liquid blushes. Some are just trickier to work with and you really have to know a certain technique to go in with them. These, they're going to blend out, they're going to buff into the skin and just give you that really natural flush. So blush number four, I do want to throw a disclaimer out. This is something that I purchased before going cruelty free and this is a brand that kind of has a confusing cruelty free status so I don't promote their products, I no longer purchase from them but if I'm being honest, if, I'm have to, if I have to be honest, this is my fourth favorite that I own. So this is the shade Tinge from Lorac. This is one that I kind of forgot that I had for a while there and I put it into a makeup basket a while ago and I just fell back in love with it. It looks a little intense, it looks like a pretty bright baby pink, but on the skin it just gives this really natural flush to the cheeks. 
Now, of course, this is not a color that's going to work for everyone. I would say it's best suited to someone my skin tone or lighter, but they do have quite a range of products but, or colors. But again, I personally no longer purchase from Lorac just because they're unable to clarify their cruelty-free status. Blush number three. I debated putting this at number two. It was tough because I really love this and it's actually in my project pan right now and that is causing me to fall more and more in love with this and I'm remembering just how beautiful this is on the cheeks and how many products it pairs with and that is the shade I Will Always Love You from Too Faced. Now these little love flush blushes are becoming harder and harder to find. They're not really available on any retailers websites. I'm only able to find them these days pretty much just on Too Faced website. So I'll leave it linked down below and lately I've noticed they don't have as many colors available so I don't know if they're trying to just be really sneaky and phase, phase them out. That would make me sad because this formula is fantastic. Now blush number one and two, you will see why they're blush number one and two because I have pan on both of them. I don't have pan on any of the other blushes in my collection except for these two. So number two, this one is a mini so it's like it's kind of makes sense why I have pan on it. But this is the shade Party from Tarte. Now, I know that a lot of us own this because it was the birthday gift from Sephora a couple years ago. This is just... Okay, I know I just said I Will Always Love You is a blush that I can pretty much use regardless of the look. But this is a blush that I really can use regardless of the look. It does not matter what look I'm going with. This matches everything and that's why it's ranked so high that's why i had such a fun time panning this and working through it because it looks good with everything and i just find it to be so flattering my final blush this is a very old formula these are never talked about anymore and it's a shame because they're so fantastic this is the urban decay afterglow blush formula and i have the shade indecent so I bought this probably three years ago at the Ulta Days of Beauty sale. I always say Days of Beauty and people always get mad. 21 Days of Beauty, 21 days. And I've just been so in love with it ever since, mostly because peachy blushes are just my thing. I just think they make you look so healthy. And this formula in particular has a really nice range of colors. They even have like a really deep purple. If you have a very, very deep skin tone, I feel like that would be so beautiful. They will not fade from your cheeks. They will last so long. And one thing I like about these is they're not too pigmented because that can be tricky with blushes where you can easily go overboard while applying it. I like my blush to be a formula that's a little bit more buildable. I don't want it sheer where I can't see it, but I want it to be buildable so that I'm in control and I'm not just easily going overboard. And that's what this is. I highly, highly recommend these. Definitely my number one. Did not even have to think about it. It's funny, in the highlighting video last week, I said the same thing. I said, all of the other rankings were such a challenge for me. I had to think, okay, where would I realistically put this? But for both videos, there was never a doubt, which brought, actually in my palette video too, never a doubt which would be my number one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't seen part one and two, I'll leave them linked down below. Not sure if I'll keep this series going, but let me know in the comment section what you would like to see. If I get a lot of requests for a certain category, I will definitely be sure to film that for you guys. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.